Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. The United States on Friday said that there is no change in its policy on Kashmir and called on India and Pakistan to maintain calm and restraint. The US policy has been that Kashmir is a bilateral issue between India and Pakistan and it is up to the two countries to decide on the peace and scope of the talks on the issue. The Maldives too on Wednesday showed support for India's decision to repeal Article 370 by highlighting that it considers the move as an internal matter. With the exception of Pakistan and China, major countries in the world have backed the Indian move that aims to integrate Kashmir more closely with the rest of the country. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze the international support for India on the Kashmir issue. Joining me on the program today are Vivek Karju, former ambassador, Harshvi Pant, Head Strategic Studies Observer Research Foundation, and Major General Ashwini Sivach, retired foreign affairs expert. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Ambassador, I'd like to begin the program with you. First, let's talk about the kind of international support that India has received over the last few days, barring, of course, uh, opposition from Pakistan and China. Other major countries are with India as far as abrogation of Article 370 is concerned. I think uh, the major countries in the international community in general, Frank, have uh, held this matter as an internal matter of India. India has asserted incorrectly that uh, under its constitution, Jammu and Kashmir is a constituent part of the union and it is for India to decide within its constitutional processes how the, the how Jammu and Kashmir will be ordered. This position is now, I think, uh, recognized directly or indirectly by the international community. And my second point is that the international community does not wish to get involved in this issue from the viewpoint of the disposition of uh, territories in Jammu and Kashmir. All right, General? Talking about Jammu and Kashmir and talking about the support that India has received, let's talk about the other side of the story as well. Pakistan, on expected lines, has decided to take this issue up with the UN, took it immediately to the OIC as well to try and ratchet up international support, to try and, you know, uh, try and leverage some of its help that it has at the OIC and other countries. Now, how successful has Pakistan been in trying to internationalize this particular issue? Frank, there is no denying the fact... Uh Pakistan will like to internationalize this issue as much as feasible because this is where it stands to gain. But as far as the world is concerned, there is no taker. Other than China, everyone stands with India that as far as Kashmir is concerned, it is a bilateral issue between India and Pakistan. So therefore, it remains isolated in world arena. To some extent, you, including even the UN General Secretary has said uh, that there is no question of mediation between this issue. It's a bilateral issue between India and Pakistan. The best thing which has happened is that the Islamic world which is there, it has also not commented anything and they are standing with India. So therefore, Pakistan has unable to take the sport which it wanted all over the place. It is thinking or depending more on US, but the US also has shown it because as on today, the US need Pakistan to exit from Afghanistan. And to some extent, US, the Pakistan was thinking that the favorable comment will come from US. That has also not come. So therefore, as far as Pakistan is concerned, in this still remain isolated. There is no taker. Everyone stands along with India. That is a bilateral issue between India and Pakistan. As far as 370 is concerned, abrogation is that internal issue of India. It nothing to do with Pakistan to that extent. And in case we have done it, it is done with the purpose of integrating Jammu and Kashmir more to the Union territory, exactly like any other state of India. So therefore, as on today, it does not look like that, that this issue has been internationalized and Pakistan has failed. But let me tell you, Pakistan will try its best again to make an effort, especially in Islamic world, that, that they can internationalize this issue and bring it out 
especially the human right violation so called alleged human right violation which have, they are perceiving are taking place in jammu and kashmir sure sure uh, professor uh, talking about the islamic world you know were you surprised at all with the uae's reaction really to this entire matter uae was one of the first few countries to come and stand with india and say that what india has done is an internal matter and we stand with india at this time uh, i think uh, you know i was uh, not surprised but i think uh, it, certainly it it was uh, i think it's a tribute to the to indian diplomacy the way india has conducted itself in the middle east over the last few years uh, and in the way indian priorities have come out in the open in the region and the engagement that india has had with uh, with uh, various parts of the middle east Uh, over the last few years is reflected in perhaps uae's uh, very generous support for india despite the history and the background uh, and i think uh, there is a recognition in the region that india uh, that india's cause uh, is uh, is just that what india is doing is it is doing uh, primarily within the domestic political context what what is also important is the growing stakes that the regional powers in the middle east have now in india's growth story so therefore they have an interest uh, you know uh, also in keeping india in good humor and india has engaged with the region in in substantive terms so clearly that back and forth has helped india in managing the um, you know the limited turbulence that could have ensued if that diplomacy was not in place so much as we reflect today on uh, how the world has come to uh, you know has favored india's uh, shift uh, on the on article 370 uh, i think one must acknowledge that there is a lot of hard work that has gone in terms of shaping the world opinion over the last few years as india has d- diplomatically and economically moved its uh, you know its uh, its diplomacy in directions uh, which have vigorously engaged uh, the various parts of the world and made a case to the world that pakistan's cause on kashmir is not only unjust but it is profoundly undemocratic by its very nature so if you if you think of what india is doing trying to do in, in its part of kashmir and what pakistan is doing so now as pakistan tries to internationalize it all of these issues will be out on the table hmm. so it can't be it, it's not a one way street that you know pakistan can claim let's internationalize it let's talk about all what that, that india is doing let's bring everything on the public fora the moment it goes to public fora uh, pakistan's own record will be, will also be on the table which is very very dubious so i think uh, the recognition in large parts of the world is that india's case remains just india's case remains within the constitutional boundaries uh, of uh, within the constitutional bounds of uh, of what uh, india had expected at the very beginning and uh, uh, you know a lot of patient hard work diplomatically that india had done over the last few years you know talking about india's diplomatic hard work over the last few years ambassador i'd like to bring you in on this you know maybe 15 20 years ago we saw the oic reacting very differently to issues like this but this time around it has reacted differently as well why is that so do you think what has changed over the over the last one or two decades look what ob- apart from this our diplomatic uh, nimbleness uh, the fact is that over the last two decades there is a new india there is a an india which is uh, done exceedingly well economically there is an india which is uh, has a market which other countries want to utilize there is an india which can project pa so no one wishes to entangle itself with with this india unless it has to unless its national interests are at stake so this is a also a recognition of india's growing stature in the world as far as the oic is concerned the oic formally has a position largely propelled by pakistan on jammu and kashmir and that's been there for the last 3 uh, decades it has a contact group the contact group meets it gets publicity only ironically in pakistan in the rest of the oic membership it's largely ignored but the oic processes are such that it gets a little play within the oic itself bilaterally no country is willing to to really engage us negatively on this issue yes uh, imran khan has reached out to malaysia 
and turkey and they may do a little choo choo but that's of little consequence quite frankly it's a very little consequence so all in all uh, nobody wishes really to intervene uh, and take sides on this issue and uh, the us statement that you mentioned is is endorsing that it's a bilateral issue and if it is a bilateral issue uh, then it doesn't want to intervene i think it burnt its fingers with trump's offer and the swift repudiation also mediation by its very nature is if both parties agree and india has never agreed india is stressing always that there is a bilateral matter and under the simla agreement it will be settled bilaterally absolutely you know and another aspect you know some a point i think you raised in your opening uh, statement uh, yeah, nice. general you know this issue of pakistan trying to bring up this issue of human rights in yeah. kashmir considering what pakistan has done and the point that uh, professor pant was making about pak's dubious record in the past considering what pakistan has done over the last 70 years in gilgit baltistan how can pakistan rake up this particular issue because it has changed the demography of that region over the last 7 decades uh, absolutely correct frank what they have done to pakistan occupied kashmir is known uh, by everyone it is there in international fora that in gilgit and baltistan over a period of time they have changed the demography they have made certain ex servicemen settle down from from punjab the second thing what they have done is in basically muzaffarabad kotli they have also not done any development in that area they are considered like a second class city there in, including the complete pakistan occupied country no roads no development no electricity compare it with the part which is with with india the development has taken place the democracy is vibrant now the panchayat elections have taken place the power have gone to the grassroots level is officers are visiting the villages so therefore everything is happening absolutely okay in indian kashmir whereas the pakistan occupied kashmir visa with other states is a second class citizen it is known to the whole world as to how they have treated and not only this how they have treated uh, baluchist and how have they treated their own minority shias as well as ahmadiyas so therefore as well pakistani concern the track record is very poor and they the whole world knows it as to how it is aiding and abetting terrorism it is not only in india that it is sending laskar e toba and jaise mohammad what it has done in uh, afghanistan basically afghanistan problem is emanating from pakistan the taliban and haqqani group and even iran is Uh, now trying to raise finger on pakistan on sunni minute so therefore the track record of pakistan is very dubious and uh, the whole world knows it as far as india is concerned whatever are the constraint the human right violations are uh, as far as in jnk is concerned are minimal because the policy of indian armed forces is minimum force and less collateral jail and zero tolerance to human right violation this is known to the whole world so therefore once you compare india with pakistan everyone will say that as far as pakistan concern the track record is bad you know financial action task force is there the body which has already declared pakistan as a grey list basically for money laundering and terrorist funding and the 26 point which were given by that out of the 24 points have not been implemented so that there is a chance that pakistan may be downgraded from grey to blacklist in september right. so that is also known to the whole world so therefore what pakistan is trying to teach us please look into your own house you have not managed the minorities well from 23% the minorities have come less than 2% and what you have done in pakistan occupied kashmir for your own interest you have never let that area develop and you have changed the demographic pattern of uh, Pakistan occupied Kashmir over a period of time, settling down the Punjabis ESM and all. So therefore, Pakistan has no say. Whatever has been done by India is well within the constitution. It has been accepted by the parliament, and it has done through a democratic democratic process, which has been recognized. That so the, I am sure the world knows it, and the world will stand by with India. Okay, okay. Is there anything that we need to be wary of as far as the international community is concerned going forward, Professor? well i think uh, one thing that uh, we have seen for example how um, washington under mr trump uh, can create noises and create and, and that complicates uh, positions you know we we have seen mr trump changing his position week after week after week 
So uh, while the State Department has come out with a statement, we should be wary of the fact that Mr. Trump tomorrow can tweet something on this issue. And while that would not change the ground reality, what it does is, it, it does it, uh, you know, what it, in some ways it, it, you know, it emboldens Pakistan to take certain steps which may be very uh, problematic for the larger regional peace and stability under the false uh, assumption that somehow it, America has its back. Because what we have seen over the last uh, few weeks, in fact, is that America has a very limited interest in Pakistan and that is how it can get help from uh, a Pakistan vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan. But beyond that, as, as the Washington uh, approach uh, to this question uh, in this week has basically made it very clear, that they are not interested in getting themselves entangled in the Kashmir issue. They have a very well-defined Kashmir uh, policy, which they will carry forward, uh, irrespective of what is happening in Afghanistan. And I think by now, um, Pakistan is realizing the folly of over-interpreting Mr. Trump's statements. <coughs> the, uh, the other, I think, important element might be that, uh, you know, one will see uh, this attempt to ratchet up pressure. Hmm. So what Pakistan's, you know, Mr. Imran Khan's speech, if you, if you see it carefully, is basically an attempt to make a big halabaloo around Kashmir. That, look, if you don't look uh, at this region, we, we have certain, uh, you know, we can do certain things. And in fact, he, you know, he was also brandishing the nuclear sword in some ways. There was a, uh, you know, there's a, you know, there's an element of a, there's an undercurrent of nuclear threat there. More Pulawama type of attacks exactly. is something so that he's he spoken you know, about. So, so I think that is something that, that they have, and they, they may do that because that's something that they would, would want the world to now look at the region. Because if the world has completely given up on Pakistan now, that's the last card that they, that they would have. And that is something that, again, they've been doing it for so long. And part of the problem is that they've cried wolf for so long that now something, even if something really happens, the international community would be very dubious about it. But I think we have to be careful of how they can shape the narrative because uh, they ultimately the whole raison d'etre of the Pakistani army is a Kashmir. So clearly they have huge stakes in what they do going forward. Uh, but beyond that, I think what we have seen over the last few years is that certainly Pakistan's policy of the old variety is now giving them diminishing returns. Increasingly, we find that country after country is now looking away from Pakistan. Sure. And that is something that uh, is also, uh, I think, heartening to India, but also might be more, uh, you know, a dampener for Pakistan. And in that sort of spirit where they have nothing to lose, they might also go for the jugular. Okay, they might go for, for some, something misadventurous is, is what you're suggesting. I'll just come to you, General, on that particular aspect of it. But before that, Ambassador, uh, you know, one more thing that I'd like to draw your attention to is the UN Secretary General's statement on Article 370 and Kashmir. It seems a bit confusing. It seems, uh, you, know, you know, a little out of place. What do you make of his statement? Uh, before I come to that, Frank, permit me this comment that uh, ultimately the international community will see the situation on the ground in uh, uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, and that is, uh, if any discomfiture were to come to us, it will come from that angle. I am confident that we will be able to maintain calm, maintain peace and restore the normal processes. That healing thing has already begun. Uh, but uh, it's the human rights angle, the so-called human rights angle, which will form the basis of a move towards uh, any kind of uh, any kind of negative attention uh, to JNK. Now, as far as your question was concerned, yes, you are right. The Secretary General's uh, uh, statement of yesterday completely misreads the Simla agreement. It mentions the Simla agreement, but it mentions it in terms that, to my mind, are completely unacceptable and I do think that we should place on record our repudiation of what it says first of all about the similar agreement uh, I don't have time to go into details because uh, it's 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 a ridiculous interpretation of the similar agreement uh, but also generally uh, say that he is on the wrong track and reiterate firmly that the similar agreement which is anchored in the bilateral route of resolution of issues relating to JNK and the only real issue 
इज पाकिस्तानी टेरिटरी इज पाकिस्तान ऑक्यूपाइड टेरिटरीज इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर एंड फर्मली प्लेस दिस ऑन रिकॉर्ड एब्सोल्यूटली absolutely i'm going to go back to a point that uh, professor pant was making about you know pakistan trying something out really since its attempts on the international arena are failing to ratchet up some kind of pressure on this particular issue is pakistan going to try some misadventure on the loc is that something that we should be concerned and watchful about general absolutely frank there is a huge pressure as far as imran khan is concerned there is a public pressure there is a pressure from opposition that it he bound to react now three four things uh, which can be done before that what will happen is the test is how we manage this next three to four month how do we manage the perception management we have already won the first round that we have handled the situation diplomatically well we have surprised the world we have surprised our own self and the way we have maneuvered and prepared ourselves for this action is praiseworthy so first round has won what is now important is as to how we handle the situation when the curfews are removed when the normal life will start in kashmir so in case there are human rights violation there are a uh, lot of people come in the street there are certain casualties then automatically it come into international gray so this is what it will be important for us to manage to me it looks like that the way we have handled the situation so far very maturely we are prepared ourselves we have already improved the counter insurgency grid as well as the law and order grid in kashmir valley as far as line of control is concerned we are well prepared to handle it now let me uh, tell you as to what pakistan will try to do it will try to do two three things one is that it will activate the line of control to the best it will start using including artillery what he started already started doing on, on the civilian area 3 to 400 terrorists are already sitting in launch pad out of them almost 100 hour fidain it is already to be pumped in it will now make sure that we, given the opportunity he will try to pump them in he will also try to activate laskar e toba jaise mohammad ogw sleeper cell within the kashmir valley to uh, to increase the violence to show to the world that there is a problem inside the kashmir the most important thing which is likely to do is a uh, misinformation and you can say cyber warfare it will now try to create a problem within kashmir by by through the social media send the rumors this is where we have to be very very alert and all in addition to that what it is likely to do is that uh, the violence level which will increase now my my point is that we are only focusing ourselves as far as in kashmir valley is concerned there is a little bit we have to also see in the kargil area of, of uh, uh, ladakh now that there are two areas in in uh, ladakh one is leh one is kargil the kargil were initially shia but there is a sunni population which have settled down they are also not very happy to be made a unit territory they wanted to remain with the jammu and kashmir so there also there can be a problem but overall what will happen is how do we manage the environment how do we manage this situation if we can bring the normalcy in an, uh, next about 2 3 months as the curfew is released and we counter the pakistan which we are already prepared on line of control also within the kashmir valley by improving our counter insurgency grid and on line of control counter infiltration grid and handle it maturely we have won the battle so the sure. test goes now next 3 4 months has to be very critical very careful at the same time perception management of the public we have to tell to the uh, awam whatever has been done ultimately done good for you do right. not think that 370 has been abrogated that you have no protection this is all protection in fact it is only good for you investment will come you know tourism will be increased mm -hmm. you will able to have more powers and misconception whichever is there in the mind of uh, the people of kashmir must be slowly and slowly removed and handle two things which i will say that the parties which are mainstream the leaders of that must be handled with political care sure. they are not anti national whereas huriyat leader is concerned isolate them they are already under the you know arrest isolate them remove them from kashmir valley and nia is already doing that so sure. therefore handle the situation maturely this 3 4 month are going to be very crucial for jammu and kashmir absolutely all right yes ambassador you want to add no, something i think uh, of course as far as the mainstream is concerned there's been a fusillade against the mainstream leadership in kashmir so that's something else i think two things 
इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट इज ऑफकोर्स इम्पोर्टेंट एंड आई थिंक द प्राइम मिनिस्टर वॉज करेक्ट इन फोकसिंग ऑन इट बट हिस्ट्री शोज दैट अलॉन्ग विद इकोनॉमिक डिवेलपमेंट पीपल वॉन्ट द मेंटेनेंस ऑफ द आइडेंटिटी whether uh, stemming from ethnic factors cultural factors religious factors and i think there is need to send a great message to the valley and to the international community that this step that we've taken in no way represents any kind of desire to interfere with the identity of the kashmir valley the second thing is that apart from uh, the steps that pakistan may take which the general has spoken so eloquently i think uh, we should be prepared for innovative steps mm. large scale demonstrations yeah so very correct right mm. so i'm sure our people have thought through all these things that the pakistanis can do but it struck me that uh, this is an option that well may be employed now because it will uh, it with violence has failed and they know violence has failed mm. so what else absolutely and that's an eventuality that we need to be prepared for and we need to be wary of going forward all right uh, professor close the show for us with your closing remarks or concluding remarks on the on the best way forward as far as handling and uh, what to expect from the international community is concerned well i think what we have seen so far is uh, is uh, i think india has handled the first round very well we have come out uh, on top of things we have managed to Uh, create a narrative or craft a narrative which is largely has been accepted by the world and that's a very important part of of how do you manage perception in the first phase but i think going forward the battle or the you know the struggle shifts to the valley itself because you will get the most opposition from there uh, expectedly so clearly how do you win their hearts and minds i think that is going to be a struggle uh, in the short term but i think given that you have created or the the narrative that india has created uh is is very positive and i think what was most interesting about the prime minister's speech yesterday that he was, it was so forward looking you know it was yes there was there was a, there was a, the, an attempt to talk of article 370's context but he was talking about the future and i think that generation that is now growing up in whether it is in jammu ladakh or uh, in in the valley they all want to look forward they all want to look uh, to the future how it evolves and i think if india can be a part of that journey as uh, part of that aspirational uh, you know india uh, i think uh, indian policy makers would find uh, that things would become relatively easy but clearly the idea would be how do you manage uh, you know uh, this the sense of alienation that has been there historically and whether through your through the means that you are now projecting the developmental side the political uh, question that the prime minister addressed as well as the cultural thing that the ambassador mentioned that look identity is very important it has to be protected Uh, so what what is what is it now for an indian state to do in that in that realm and i think if you can bring all these elements together you would find that things may not be as difficult as perhaps it has been made out to be in certain parts of the media sure yes general very quickly uh, i've got limited yeah, time yeah frank the two issue which which are uh, very important as far as the kashmiri are concerned they are feeling slightly let down one is that their state has been downgraded to a union territory that has been already clarified by by the prime minister that's the temporary measure as and when the situation will improve they will get a full statehood second thing is that they are also worried ki the demography of of jammu and kashmir may be changed because now anyone and everyone can buy the land now remember what is happening uttarakhand and himachal they also have some sort of restriction i'm sure the government of will is is aware of this and they may try to put some filters that it is not open for everyone and everyone to go there there are some restriction there is a mechanism which will be followed so that the people of kashmir should feel it their ethnicity will be maintained so sure. it will not happen that it is it is a supper night for everyone whatever is happening in other hill state like himachal pradesh and uttarakhand and nagaland some sort of this thing will also come in and maximum thing what is required is a strong economic package must be given along with this so that the development comes into kashmir valley which is also visible to the people of kashmir all right ambassador i'll let you have the last say on the program no i really don't have much to add i think everything has been covered uh, we should expect that pakistan will throw everything that they can at us they were initially very wary in moving forward uh, but there is enormous pressure on a uh, imran khan because over the decades uh, they sort of put kashmir in their blood in mm. their dna mm. it's very difficult to they, they can't think rationally on it uh, so uh, it's going to be a long haul 
and we should be prepared for that. There are no quick fixes here. Yeah, all right. There are no quick fixes. It's going to be a long haul and we should be prepared for it is what uh, the panelists are suggesting. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time.